Hi, Steve here. I said before that I was going to go through the book of Enoch because the book of Enoch, regardless of what some so-called theologians think, I'm convinced the book of Enoch should have stayed in the scriptures. It was in the scriptures until about 500 years ago. Why didn't it? Why didn't they keep it? Probably because of what was revealed in the book of Enoch they didn't want you to know. Did fallen angels come down and mate with earthly women producing the giants recorded in Genesis chapter 6? The book of Genesis says they did, and the book of Enoch says they did. So why are there so many people that believe it's not true? It's all because of a misinterpretation of what Jesus said recorded in Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. In that verse, Jesus was simply explaining about what human beings would be like in eternity, and the bodies we would have would be like the angels, which simply means we will have glorified bodies. Not these mortal fleshly bodies, but like too many people do, they've twisted and misinterpreted and taken out of context those verses too. But here's the ugly and dirty and unfortunate truth of man's early history. Chapter 6 of the book of Enoch talks about angels taking human wives. And it came to pass, when the children of man had multiplied in those days, were born to them beautiful and comely daughters, and the angels, the children of the heavens, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and get us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said to them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. So it's very clear here that this fallen angel is confessing that he understands that what he's going to do is against God's will. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then they all swore together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it, and they were in all about 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by a mutual imprecation. An imprecation is when you invoke a curse or a disaster upon one's foe. You invoke evil upon. So these angels agreed that they should be cursed as well as Semjaza if they broke their promise to come down and mate with these earthly women. In other words, it was a pact to do this great evil. I won't give all the names of all the leaders of these fallen angels, but the Book of Enoch actually lists them by name. So they did as they swore to do, and they began to go into them and to defile themselves with them, and they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots, and they made them acquainted with plants. Now, this is not your naturopathic, homeopathic type training. No, these fallen angels were teaching them to use these plants and roots and enchantments and charms to do spells and witchcraft and evil. And they became pregnant and they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Maybe this is why the so-called church leaders back then took out the book of Enoch. This is a horror beyond your worst nightmares. But the most frightening part is, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. And he said, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. Does this hint that there will be giants once again? Well, science today is making it all possible with DNA and cloning. And then in chapter eight, skills and knowledge were taught by the fallen angels. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Semjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. 
The other angels taught them astrology, the constellations, knowledge of the clouds, signs of the earth, signs of the sun, and the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. The mating of angels and earthly women who were mortal was never God's will. And these fallen angels knew it. Not only did they mate with them, which created giants on the earth, but they also taught them every evil that they understood from supernatural knowledge. So now mankind is crying out in agony and desperation from the act of these fallen angels mating and producing giants with earthly women. Chapter 9 talks about the anxiety of the good angels as they observe the destruction and demoralization of humanity. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said to one another, the earth made without inhabitant cries, the voice of their crying up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, bring our cause before the most high. And they said to the Lord, of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and God of the ages, the throne of your glory stands unto all the generations of the ages, and your name, holy and glorious, and blessed unto all the ages. So we hear how the angels are addressing the Most High, Almighty God. You have made all things, and power over things you have, and all things are naked and open in your sight, and all things you see, and nothing can hide itself from you. You see what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth, and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Simjaza, whom you gave authority to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of man upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants and the whole earth is thereby filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suit to the gates of heaven and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And you know all things before they come to pass. And you see these things and you do suffer them. And you do not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. So these angels were asking God what he would have them to do, if anything, about this great evil brought about by these fallen angels. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spoke and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech and said to him, go to Noah and tell him in my name, hide yourself and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again, the Lord said to Raphael, bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael and cast him there and place upon him a rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness. Let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light. So God's telling Enoch about the flood also mentioned in the scriptures in Genesis 6.13 and 2 Peter 2.4 said that God spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And then it says, and on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire. That's exactly the same thing Jesus said in Matthew 25, 41 and Revelation 20, 10. And God says, and heal the earth, which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. 
And to Gabriel the Lord said, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from among men and cause them to go forth and send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle. For the length of days they shall not have and no request that they make of you shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life and that each one of them will live 500 years. So God was telling Gabriel here that these offspring and the people born of utter depravity and sin will not live for eternity like they hoped they would. And the Lord said to Michael, go bind Simjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness and when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated. And this is exactly what Jude 6 says and Revelation 20 verses 10 through 15. There's nothing the book of Enoch contradicts with the word of God. It only gives more detail. Verse 13, In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. So here Enoch is being told of the future of God's son coming to the earth. And in verses 17, 18 and 19, he talks about the blessings of what will take place when there's no more evil on earth. And in the last three verses of chapter 10 of the book of Enoch, we see God's ultimate will. This is what he really wants. And cleanse the earth from all oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all godlessness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth. Destroy from off the earth. And all the children of men shall become righteous and all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me and all shall worship me. That's exactly what Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. And the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement and from all sin and from all punishment and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation and forever. So it's very clear in these chapters of the book of Enoch and the Bible. They're all consistent. God will not tolerate sin either from glorified angelic beings or from man made in his own image. Think about it.